And you can see this in the world out there, right? Steve, uh, Bill Gates, let's take Bill Gates, a different uh, uh, technology entrepreneur. Bill Gates builds Microsoft. He makes $70 billion for himself building Microsoft. How many people does he help in the world by building Microsoft? How many people's lives does he change for the better? I would argue pretty much everybody on the planet. We're all better off for Microsoft. I mean, I'm an Apple guy. I've been an Apple consumer since 1989. But I know that without Microsoft, without standardization, we might not have the internet. We, you know, our lives are so much easier. Computing would be much more primitive. So much easier because of what Microsoft did. He has literally raised the standard of living of almost every person on the planet. Billions of people have benefited from him making $70 billion. By the way, the only way to make money in a free market is by providing a service or value to somebody else who values it more than what you're selling it for. Otherwise, they wouldn't buy it. So when I buy a Microsoft product for 100 bucks, it's worth more than 100 bucks to me. And if you do the calculation, it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, over the lifetime. So here's Bill Gates building a business, creating jobs, creating an industry, creating wealth, changing everybody's lives, making everybody's lives better. And how much moral credit does he get for that activity? Zero. I mean, we think of him as a good businessman, but how many people think, oh, Bill Gates, yeah, he was a, wow, that was a moral thing he did by starting Microsoft and making lots of money. I mean, we laugh because that's not even, that's not even in the framework of morality the way we think about it, right? So at best, he's kind of morally neutral, but mostly we kind of say, particularly in, in the world in which today where inequality is deemed this evil thing, we say, oh, no, he must be a bad guy because he's so rich. So he gets negative moral credit for all this good he's done in the world. He gets negative moral credit. Now, when does Bill Gates become a good guy? Well, that's slightly good guy. He's not a saint yet, but a good guy, kind of more positive. He leaves Microsoft. God forbid he should continue to create wealth and create products and sell them to us, right? Now he goes and starts a philanthropy. And now he starts giving his money away. Right? That's good. Now he's a good guy. Now we like him. We like philanthropists. We love charity. Those are good things. Now, how many people is he going to help in his charity? Uh, quite a few, hundreds of thousands maybe. Not billions. It doesn't matter. It's not how many people you help. It's what you get out of it. Why do we view Bill Gates as a good guy now that he's a philanthropist? Because he's not making any money. Because he's not benefiting it. Because he's not being self-interested. He's being perceived as caring about others. That's good, caring about others. That's a positive. Caring about yourself, negative. How would Bill Gates attain sainthood? How do we make him a great historical figure that people talk about for generations? What would he have to do? Yeah, we'd have to give it all away, move into a tent, and if he could bleed a little bit, that would make him heroic. I mean, then we'd really, you know, sainthood. I haven't talked to Pope, but I think sainthood would be forthcoming. Now, I, I consider that a perversion, a perversion of morality, a perversion of justice, a perversion to build something, to create wealth, jobs, flourishing for your own life, improve the people's well-being all over the world, that we consider eh, insignificant. But to give it, to give the wealth that you had to create, by the way, it didn't just appear out of nowhere. You had to build it. You had to create it. To give it now, oh, that's virtuous and noble and wonderful and heroic. But that's the moral system we have. And this idea of giving, this idea of selflessness as being virtuous is con completely inconsistent with capitalism. Because capitalism is not about giving. It's about trading. It's about selling. It's about buying. It's not about sacrifice, because capitalism is not about sacrifice. So capitalism, by definition, in the moral system that we live in today, is not virtuous. It can't be virtuous. Because the people in it are motivated by self-interest, and they are. There's no doubt about that. 
And the two things that happened politically because of this, uh, because of this conflict, this conflict between the ethical system that we have and between the way markets work. What happens to these businessmen and generally to people in the world when, when they, in generally on a day-to-day -day basis, they are pursuing your own self-interest. So imagine, put yourself in their place. You're pursuing your self-interest, but you've been taught that self-interest is bad, and you've been taught that you should be, you know, be selfless. You should be sac You should be Mother Teresa. That's what you should be. But nobody wants to be Mother Teresa. So we all live a different life. What, what do you think that happens inside of you when you live one life and your moral ideal is a different life? What emotion does that generate? Shame or guilt. I would say guilt. Guilt. I feel guilty. And most wealthy people today feel guilty for the wealth they've made. Bill Gates certainly is an example of that. They feel guilty about it. And much of their charity is not motivated by benevolence and love of their fellow man. Most of their charity is motivated by trying to buy themselves into heaven. Whether they're religious or not, the equivalent of heaven, the equivalent of virtue. They're trying to buy themselves into virtue by giving their money away. Because that's what they've taught is virtuous. Making it, again, is not. Giving it is.